Hello guys, this is Mike from mcprogramming.org. Today I'm going to show you a little step of how to open up a program through Java. Uh, this comes in handy if you are if you write a program and you need to access uh, Google Chrome real quick. Uh, just write this one line little uh, statement and it will open up Google Chrome or you can open up a Notepad++ or whatever program you want. So let me show you how to do this real quick. Uh, go to the go to the project that you want. Do new Java class. Um, I'm just gonna say call PGM call program. Put a main method in there. Finish. Go here. You don't need this right now. Um, you can hit Control D to delete the line. So what we're gonna want to do is first off. What we're gonna need a try catch block uh, for this um, because it is it will throw an exception if the program cannot be found. But I'll just write the code and then it'll automatically generate the try catch block for me. So what we're gonna do is we're, we're gonna call a process and we, let's just call that p. And we're gonna say equals runtime dot get runtime dot execute and what th what this does is it's going to uh, call a process it's going to execute the commands in here and it's going to take in a string or an array of strings and pretty much what you want that string to be is the path to an executable file you have so let me go copy and paste some real quick on my I think I already have some saved in here, so Control V. Yep, and that's my Google Chrome. I'm getting an error because of uh, invalid escape sequence. And you use this to say, for instance, if you want to do backslash T, that will do a tab in the text. Um, so for this, you want to either put two backslashes, or you can just change the direction of the slash. Um, that's what I like to do just so it doesn't look so confusing and then that way you can just put one it's going to be a little pain in the butt to do this but makes life a little bit easier then this whole thing is going to become red because it needs to be a try catch block and a try catch block because it can throw an IO exception and what that means is when it tries to execute this file uh, it if it does not find the file, it'll have to throw an IO exception saying the file has not been found. So let's hover over this, and if we say add throws uh, declaration, it'll say throw IO exception right here. But I like to do the try catch box, and what this does is it throws it put that within the try catch, and it'll catch the IO exception and print out the results of the error. So we can get rid of this little to do statement. So this is all we need. Let's see what happens if we press run. Say OK. Bam. You got Google. Uh, sometimes this would be good. Um, let's see. Maybe you have a button on a GUI you created that says, you know, go to the web or, you know, use your imagination. There's plenty of times where you might want your program to call the internet. So you can have that as... Uh, the event if a button is pressed or if a commit any type of you know something happens where you need that let's put in not an internet file but let me put in another type of file let's see can we use my desktop uh, let's see iTunes Go to properties and we're gonna want to use this right here copy that back to clips paste and in this example I'll just use the two backslashes and I hope I'm saying that right I really don't know the names for each one that goes in different directions see there you go now no more errors hit this please work iTunes always likes to take its time opening. But something's happening. My mouse, mouse is clicking. 
Come on. There we go. So, there's your iTunes. No, I don't want that as my default. Exit out. No, I don't want to download iTunes. Uh, well, there you go. Uh, there's also other things you can do. Um, you can p create input and output streams within these these uh, commands. And what that will do, for instance, is uh, you can create your own Java file and uh, make it a create it into a jar so it runs. And if it takes input and output, uh, a good example is I, I one time had to make a dictionary uh, a translator where you would feed it an English word and it would give you back a, a word in a language of your choice. I picked Spanish. So what you would do is you would call the Java jar file and then give it a space and then put in the word you'd like to send to it and you'd have to set up input and output streams to send the word to that program and then read the, the input that's being outputted from the actual thing and this it was actually pretty cool but uh, if you've heard of a socket that's a much more efficient way of doing it but I think this is a pretty cool method uh, um, I've had to use this a few times to open up programs at the click of a button. So I hope you like this little one-liner. It helps a lot. And please subscribe to my channel, Mick Programming, and keep watching. I'll try to keep going with the beginner videos, and I hope to go through those pretty quickly and help everybody get a little uh, foundation for their Java programming, and then we can step into some more difficult stuff or some unique stuff like this that can help you. So please comment what you would like me to make a video of and I will try my best. Thank you all very much and have a good one.